Welcome back, everyone, to the morning show. The time now is 7.08. It's that time of the week again. Time to start asking why. Our wise guy, Matt Selling, joins us live. And we know that heat and cold drive the weather, but Matt Selling here is going to explain how we can also apply heat and cold to uh, some experiments that he has for us to uh, teach us some things. Oh, we got lots of experiments, and so we're going to do a few today and, and a few next week. <clears throat> So let me finish up what I started saying at the end of the last segment. What I have here is this uh, bucket of liquid nitrogen, and it's very cold stuff. It's, it's colder than 300 degrees below. And so um, the, the reason things conduct heat is very similar to the reason they conduct uh, electricity. is because you have uh, the atoms and the electrons specifically that can move around. So in a metal, the electrons can move a lot better than they can in, uh, in an insulator. So typically, metals conduct heat also much better. And so you can see that here. Uh, the copper, which is uh, very, very cold, gets really, really frosty. And this piece of plastic, which is just as cold at the bottom, is completely warm at the top. Ooh. So that's, that's a very good insulator. Now, what I have over here is a, an excellent insulator. If you look at this thing, it looks kind of interesting. And this actually came off the bottom of a space shuttle that has mm. actually been up in space and landed a few times. And if you've seen these things come in and land, you'll know that the bottom of these space shuttles get red hot, yet the astronauts inside don't get cooked. And so that's a very important thing. And so I borrowed from my colleagues in the material science department a chunk of this space shuttle tile. And my daughter, Emily, is going to help me uh, demonstrate that <laughs> this stuff is a very good insulator. So she's going to hold this in her hands. And I'm going to take my blow torches here, two of them. So if you hold it, it's more like that, Emily. She's standing kind of far back there, Matt. That's right. <laughs> and I'm just going to put the blow torches on this. And you can see that this thing is getting red hot. OK? And you can see the inside of this thing is getting red hot. But Emily is very happy because her hands are nice and cold, and nothing bad is happening to her at all. And I could hold this thing on here all day long. Basically, when you see something that's orange hot like that, it's about 1,500 to 2,000 degrees in temperature, and only an inch away, it's nice and cold on her hands. So I'm going to take this away now. And uh, you'll see that very quickly, this tile is no longer red hot. And in fact, if I just wait for a few seconds, I can touch it. Now, why, why is it staying cold like that? Why isn't it heating up like we would typically think of something that would warm quickly? It does get very, very hot, but the beauty of this stuff is it doesn't hold heat in very well at all. So it doesn't transfer heat from front to back, and it also gets rid of its heat very, very well. So hmm. this stuff is, is special. And this tile here is quite expensive. I think they paid about 700 bucks for it, so don't think of uh, insulating your house with it or anything. <laughs> but, <Wow>. uh, <laughs> but anyways, before we leave, I have... Uh, last week, I asked the question, uh, what's the best color to paint your house in the winter? And uh, we have several answers from people who thought that, the, that you should paint uh, the house a dark color, which turns out is, is partly the right answer. And I think uh, I'm going to give the t-shirt to, uh, to uh, Sean Woody, who is in the seventh grade at Muhammad Seymour, and, uh, for, for answering that. And several people said the same thing. And it turns out it's a much more complicated question than I thought, actually. <laughs> and so uh, I looked into it myself, and I realized that I thought I knew what the answer was, and I didn't really know what the answer was. And so we're going to explore this a little bit more next week when we talk about radiation and convection, which are the other two ways that heat can transfer. And we have some cool demos for that, too. All right, that, sound, that sounds really good. Thanks a lot for joining us here this morning. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. Your weather on the threes is straight ahead. But first, if you have any questions.